In this clip I will look at trigonometric functions. Here we see xy plane and the green is the unit circle, which means that on the boundary of the unit circle we find points which have distance 1 to the origin. Yeah, so suppose we have a point with coordinates x, y, then we see x along the x-axis and y along the y-axis. Also we see that we have a right angle triangle over here. Here's the right angle and suppose that the angle we find here is given by phi. And so that this angle equals phi. And we have a right angle triangle. And the sinus of this angle phi is defined by the y coordinate, length of y, divided by the length of the oblique side, or the hypotenusa. The cosinus of phi is defined by x divided by 1. So the length of this side divided by the length of the hypotenusa, which equals x. The tangent of phi is defined as the sinus of phi divided by the cosinus of phi, which equals y divided by x. So by moving around x, y along the unit circle, then we vary the angle phi, and we see the sinus and the cosinus and the tangent of phi as a function of phi, so here is the graph of the cosinus, which is a periodic function. After we rotate it over 2 pi, then we get the original values again. So we complete a full circle by phi by rotating over 2 pi. The sinus of phi is a translated for uh, uh, the translated the graph of the sinus is translation of the graph of the cosinus in this fashion. The tangent of phi, well, here is the thing that actually when the cosinus of phi is zero, the tangent of phi is not uh, uh, defined. So we have, in particular, we have vertical asymptotes at minus a half pi, a half pi, and 3 over 2 pi, so a half pi plus k times pi. And this is a typical graph of the tangent function. Now consider the graph of the sinus of phi. We clearly see that actually this function, the sinus of phi, from r to minus 1, 1, is not an injective function, right? So uh, you just need to perform the horizontal line test to, to be sure that this is not true. The horizontal line test gives you f for certain values two distinct originals. So this function is not invertible. So this function defined on R has no inverse. So now we reconsider the function and restrict the domain to minus a half pi half pi if we do so, then we see that we actually have a strictly increasing, monotonically increasing function. Yeah, so we see the yellow line over here that actually indicates a strictly increasing function. So the sinus defined as such on the domain minus a half pi a half pi is an injection. And therefore, it has an inverse. Well, this inverse, so the sinus here is invertible. And this function is called the arc sinus. So arc sine is the sinus, the inverse of the sinus. And be careful, the sinus is 
with a minus 1, it doesn't mean 1 over the sinus, no, it's the inverse of the sinus. So the domain of the arc sinus is no more than the range of the sinus, which is minus 1, 1, the closed interval minus 1, 1. And the range of the arc sinus is no more than the domain of the sinus of minus half pi, half pi. So now look at the graph of this function, the arc sinus. If you look at the x, y axis, so here is the x axis, the y axis, then actually this is the curve that we get by reflecting the sinus of phi in the line x equals y. Well, something similar holds for the cosinus. So look at the cosinus, which the graph is of course related to that one by the sinus. It's the graph of the sinus shifted a half pi to the left. And we see that actually if we look at the cosinus defined on R, yeah, so it has a range minus one, one, but this is not an injection. Yeah, just look at the horizontal line test uh, actually performing the horizontal line test at one level of y we have two originals, two intersections with the graph of the cosinus. So the cosinus in itself is not an invertible function. Now again we restrict the domain and now we choose to restrict the domain to 0 pi. If we do so, we see that the cosinus restricted to 0 pi is actually strictly decreasing, monotonically decreasing. Yeah, in 0 it, it attains the value 1 and in pi it attains the value minus 1. So the cosinus defined on 0 pi is an injection and so it has an inverse. Yeah, it is an invertible function. And the function we get as the inverse of this function defined on 0 pi is called the arc cosinus. So it's the inverse of the function the cosinus. So the domain of the arc cosinus equals the range of the cosinus, which is, again is minus 1, 1, and the range equals the domain of the restriction, the restricted function cosinus, so, which is 0 pi. Well, here's the graph of the arc cosinus, which is just this part over here rotated or reflected in the line x equals y. Yeah, so we have typical values in 1 it is 0 and in minus 1, in minus 1 it has the value pi. Now consider the tangent. The tangent function, so let's draw a graph. So here is the y-axis and let's draw the x-axis over here and we draw the vertical asymptotes of the function which are at minus half pi plus k times pi where k is a natural number. Then we see as a graph the following. So we indicate the origin over here, then the graph of the tangent looks like this. It's again a periodic function, periodic with period pi, 
and this function is defined on r except for minus a half pi half pi minus three over two pi etc. It's not an injective function since it's and and, and definitely not invertible for the same reason as we saw before. But now again we might restrict our domain to minus a half pi a half pi and then we see a strictly increasing function yeah, monotonically increasing function which would indicate that actually if we restrict the function to this interval then we get an injection and so this mapping is also invertible so that's what we call the the inverse of the tangent is usually understood as the inverse of the tangent on a, on on the interval minus a half pi a half pi, and it's called the arc tangent. So the graph looks like this. It's just again reflecting the graph of the tangent in the line x is equal, equals y. So where we formerly had a, vert, a horizontal or vertical asymptote at a half pi and minus a half pi, now we get horizontal asymptotes at a half pi and minus a half pi. The doma domain of the arc tangent is r, which is the range of the tangent, and the range of the arc tangent equals the domain of the restricted tangent function, which is in this case minus a half pi and half pi.